Yeah, good to go. Excellent. Born ready. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Jousts. Good evening, Jousters. Um, here, I'm joined by my co-host, Liam McNeil. My name is Nagy and we have a very special guest uh, this evening. we got uh, one of the 97 alumni and also president of the Old Boys, Stephen Crow. Stephen Crow, thank you for joining us. Thanks, boys. Very much for the invitation. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Welcome Looking to the show. To welcome to the Annie Dome. Yeah, no, we've been a big fan. Uh, we've been a big fan of yours, and uh, yeah, we've had uh, something to do with you in the past. So it's it's good to finally have you on. Well, I'm a massive fan of the Joust as yeah. well. So <laughs> as Perfect. most people are, yeah. most people tend to be. Fantastic. We'll jump straight in because obviously uh, this is a rarity uh, in in sort of the modern uh, Knights team and Knights team supporters podcast. We get to celebrate two in a row. Uh, we we went uh, down to Canberra. Obviously, a, a tough uh, road trip and. Uh, and we came away with the uh, with the chockies. Uh, what were your thoughts on the game? Uh, I'm just going to throw it out. What do you think? Uh, what do you think went right for that game? We won. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Key. Yep. In, that in was Canberra. Key. I mean, Canberra. It's tough. We've won it only four or five times in in 30 years. Mm. Um, it's a tough. It's a tough road trip. Um, I think the, the combinations between those key players, that's that spine, which I thought would take a full year or two, perhaps to to um, you know, optimize itself, is is playing. You know, outstanding footy and gelling and, and the cohesion is there much earlier than I thought. It was a bit clunky first round. I thought we won on guts and effort yep. against Manly, but that was, you know, every time we are down that end on the, on Sunday, we were scoring. There was a real sense that things were starting to fall together in, in round two. It's extraordinary. That's all I could put it down to. Yeah, what? absolutely. I, I also thought the spine would take a lot longer to gel. I mean, we know Watson and Pierce have played together quite a bit, but still you think they're going to take time to find their feet, but they've been great. They've been unbelievable. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't agree to um, uh, any more than those two. It, 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 uh, it just seemed like things were falling into place. Um, yeah, the amount of points that we could we could score down there was definitely a surprise. Uh, I knew that Canberra had a lot of points in them, uh, and you know, just to just to just to get over them in the key moments. Um, yeah, even the, the penalty count. Uh, I think in the first twenty minutes of the second half was, uh, you know, six six zip. So yeah. you know, they had to really fight uphill against a big pack to really come back. Um, but that leads me on to what do you think? Uh, you know, what do you think went wrong? What do you? What, any improvements you can see, Liam? I'll start with you. I still think the edge edge defence needs a bit of tightening up. Tau Tau and Sioni made a few fairly decisive defensive decisions as centres moved in, and were worked around for either for getting yards or for Rapana. Uh, sorry, Rapana mm. getting that try and getting that one bat back into Elliot Whitehead. I think so. The edge defence still needs work, but I think the the guys have showed that you have to go around them. It's it's very much a case of you got to go around us to score, and that's a good starting point for a you know a fairly new, especially a lot of the packs, like Crowe said, are still coming together, still yeah. gelling. But if we're making teams go around us, like we said last week, yeah. that bodes well for once the combinations find their feet, it's going to be a lot harder for teams to score against us. Crowe, do you have any uh, any yeah, points? Yeah, so this tip. So I talked about cohesion and how surprised I was that in attack that cohesion has come together a bit quicker than I thought. Um, but defence, it's just as, just as important, if not more so, than in defence, and particularly on those two edges. So there's two, the two edges work really closely together. Uh, the centre, the second row, the winger, uh, five eight. So I th- actually thought we defended, particularly the first half of the second half, yeah. when we had a massive penalty count against us, 6-0, as you said, sustained pressure, and we, we actually repelled them a few times where I thought you know, we might quite, e- or quite easily crumble here. Yeah. And certainly last year, we would have leaked a try or two and maybe the game would have got out of our hand. Um, but this time we, we stuck tight, uh, stuck tough, I should say. Um, stayed in the game and then and then iced it at the end. It's fantastic. Yeah, uh, we like to give a, um, a sort of an individual uh, sort of award each each week to a player that we thought particularly played outstanding. It was what we like to call hats off for this week. Uh, Liam, do you have your hats off for this week? I do, and I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the edge defence there of the halves and second rowers because... For me, Mitchell Pearce gets my hats off, and one of the reasons was his edge defence there with Lockie Fitzgibbon. They formed a really good combination there. I know Pearce, he saved one almost certain try against Jack Whiten. Fitzgibbon was covering him well, but I think Pearce made a lot of really good defensive decisions out on the edge there. But more importantly, he just controlled the game. The Newcastle number 7 jersey has been a bit of a poison chalice the last 10 years. It's been a... One of the hardest assignments in rugby league after Joey retired. And it seems like we've really got a dominant player who controls the game. You know, his kicking game, especially in the back quarter of the game, was amazing. Just mm. pinning Canberra back, 
getting us some really good territory. He was running straight. He straightened the defense every single... Uh, straightened the attack regularly and was helping, especially on the blind side, to Kalen Ponga on those short side moves. He was really straightening, giving Ponga, Moga, sorry, Ross... Sorry, who? Was it Kalen Pong? Thank you, sorry. Yeah, who, sorry. again, was Pong strong. He was very Pong strong. But, yeah. yeah, for me, it was Pierce. He ran straight. He straightened the attack, got the roll on, kicked brilliantly. He, he just showed what an effect an elite level halfback can have on a club. And yeah, he was immense in that game. Any hats off for you, Crow? Any individuals that stood out for you? Yeah, I thought, I think I, and I mentioned at the start that the spine of, of um, the stand of me with how quickly they've come together. And all four of them that started, Slade Griffin, um, Connor Watson, um, Pierce, of course, and, and Kalen Ponga, I thought all were had really key roles to play in the win. But for me, for two weeks in a row, Kalen Ponga has just, just excites the hell out of me every time he touches the ball. Absolutely. Um, when he does, something happens. We generally make, he makes a break or he puts someone else through a hole. He had a couple of try assists, made some busts himself. Um, he's an excitement machine, and he's about, he's about twelve years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just well, that's what Matty John said on the grill team yesterday. So it reckons Kalen Ponga is about the cheapest buy. He's the buy of the century, mm. and I think come two or three years towards the, the latter end of his contract that last year, we're going to be paying unders for him. I think he's going to come along that nicely. He was, yeah, incredible. Yeah, he was. And if, and I know we're not we're talking about Canberra, obviously, but the week before, he wasn't just exciting in attack. He wasn't just about great footwork and, and the sleight of hand. It was He was tough in defence. He made big tackles. He, he saved that try where he knocked uh, Aku over the sideline. I just think uh, you're right. It's a, it's a value buy. Yeah, for for the, for a bloke his age, uh, I think when we're all very excited to see his uh, his running game, and I thought that was uh, you know that's been on show, but his ball work, uh, especially in that Canberra game, like looking to get involved down the fringe, uh, extra man, quick hands, and also like passing through the line as well. Like you know that's for a nineteen year old uh, coming against probably one of the biggest packs in the in the comp, uh, huge guts. Uh, and there was you know when he put Lockie Fitz over, uh, you know he popped through the line, put Lockie Fitz over, and uh, I think it was. Uh, uh, a C.S. Oliola still trying to get an arm on him uh, even though the ball's already gone that's how quick he goes with that goose step down when he pushes left well, that's it's, it it's that goose step five metres out we're going to score off that every time whether it's Ponga whether it's him getting a short ball to Fitzgibbon or Guerra on the other side getting it out the back to Moga that goose step just buys a second when the defender sits back he puts him in the chair and once you're on the line and you've got to make that decision and you take that second we're going to score every time off that and teams will try and every come time. Yeah. And it's every time, oh, it's Jesus, he talks, yeah. he talks in absolutes. Uh, but, uh, he, um, but also, he's, he's obviously only a two-point win. He's goal kicking. I think he kicked five from six uh, again for a young bloke. You know, a lot of pressure. The uh, sort of game hinging uh, kicks. Uh, you know, mm. made it look pretty easy. I thought he's, he's got a good a, haircut too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. surprised he's got the whole package. Yeah. He doesn't look like a redhead until he takes that headgear off and oh. There was, yeah, there was some talks about this today at work, actually, that, was, uh, that didn't realise how red his hair was. Um, so I think he's, you know, he's bringing a whole lot of uh, people together, you know, of, of the redheads, because it's always good to have a redhead on the side, because they're, you know, they're, they, they think a bit differently. You know, mm. they don't, they don't, <laughs> they're usually a little bit crazier. But it's kind of the colour of a nice fruit-forward Pinot Noir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a nice blend, maybe. A uh, $5 bin. <laughs> Dan yes. Murphy's, yeah. Cheap rosé. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I know it was, it was very hard to pick. Was there any uh, hats back-ons for you? Like, any anyone that you thought, you know, maybe made a few errors and, uh, you know, might be, it might be something to improve on next week? Well, I thought Connor Watson made an absolute blooper. I thought that's cost us the game, and... Five minutes later, in exactly the same situation, nailed it, and it was ended up being the, the difference, didn't it? So absolutely, yeah, that's the way to that's the way to come back from a from an error. Absolutely, just, uh, fix it in the, the most convincing possible way. He uh, he managed to get um, they, they almost had like a practice run of that try, and then they got they got a redo, which you don't get in this game typically, like a, a second chance. But it was uh, like a carbon copy. You watch those, uh, you watch the lead up, and you think, hang on a second, is this a replay? And then the only difference was that he managed to yeah, get the ball and put it down. But uh, and the but, second pickup was a bit tougher, down around his toes, and uh, stayed calm under pressure and nailed it. Yeah, I think a lot of players would have, you know, uh, um, you know, not necessarily crumbled, but you know, have the game in your hands once, you, you put it down. But he was composed enough to, to, to do it again, and that's uh, that shows a lot of maturity for another young bloke. Um, but yeah, no, for me, I was I was tough to, you know, to, to separate anyone um, to, to put them out. I think it was real team effort. There was a few errors made, but again, this new side, you can't really point the fingers. Uh, Liam, anyone that stood up for you? No, again, I think Sione and uh, Moga have got to work on their defensive decisions again. But that, again, comes all back to time, working with their half inside them, the winger outside. Uh, a few times, yeah, Rapana got outside. But I think, yeah, given time and given a bit more trust in their, uh, you know, man to the left and right, I think they'll be good. How's the feeling around the club, Crowy, as far as, you know, obviously two two wins in... Uh 
uh, any obviously elation, excitement, but uh, you know, what's it like on the inside there? Well, <clears throat> just the week before round one, they asked a few of the old boys to come up into camp at Port Stevens. Yep. So four or five of us went up there, mainly to tell about the, tell them about the history of the club. There's so many new players from outside of Newcastle, so um, and and young players too who hadn't weren't even born perhaps when um, we won our first grand final, for example. So um, we spent the night with them, had a few drinks, um, did a bit of a trivia. Uh, night based on night's history and uh, they they were in great spirits yep. um, and they but they surprised me just how young they were and just how naturally buoyant they were about the upcoming season it was like they were literally under 18s playing yep. you know with a, with a season no pressure on their shoulders so it was a great for me it was great to see they also what, what I learned or took out from that that night was just how passionate they are about the town and the team most of them have come from Sydney they can't believe what a great place it is to live um, they can't believe they get stopped in the streets and you know, have the best wishes of everybody um, they come across. It's just a, a totally different feel. To come from Bondi um, to here, where footy matters, has just been a, a real pleasant surprise for most of those boys, um, those who have come from Roosters in particular. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you got them off the lattes and into a real drink. Who yeah. surprised you in trivia? Who was uh, the real secret whiz that you didn't know about? Uh, I think Ross Dog was was a lot worse than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was awful, and and he talked himself up like yeah. as the ultimate as the I'll know everything here. He knew nothing, so. <laughs> but that's uh, that's not surprising. Really, so, as far as trivia wise, hats back on goes to Nathan Ross. But, there we uh, go. That's our hats go. back on for the week. Sorry, got, Rossi. Sorry, Ross Dog, but uh, you know, you know it's, he's got he's got some. I know Ross Dog list tunes into the Joust too, so he'll, he'll definitely get that. He feedback does, and, definitely and he can't be. He's him. one of our show, he's one of our absolute favourites at the Joust, and you know. Yeah. You, it kind of makes him more human, you know, to think he's not perfect. He, he shares something in common with us, yes. with, the, with the regular people. Might because he shaved his head, you know, the Samson Delilah story. Maybe he's, you know, just his, his, uh, all that, that brainwave stuff is just, you know, going out a bit. But uh, I'm sure he'll grow back. Absolutely. I but I tell you what I, what I loved seeing from Rossi was that little plan move. And they tried it last week against Manly again, tried it earlier in the game against Canberra. Quick hands. Uh, Ponga to Moga to Rossi down the sideline. And then that little left foot kick, kick yeah, yeah. you saw when Watson scored. He and Lamb were right inside inside where the play the ball had been. They're running through, arms in the air. He knew they were going to be there. That's a really good little plan move that I think is going to come off beautifully. And Rossi, the kick was just perfect for it. Yeah. Inch perfect. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's no accident. Yeah. It's, um, it's a well-rehearsed uh, play. You know, he finds himself in a corner and uh, he comes up with the, with the answers, so... Well done. That's brilliant. Stuff, didn't stuff, didn't stuff. have the answers for trivia. He had the answers on, yeah, on yeah. Sunday afternoon. And that's where we need him. Yeah, that's that's where we need him. Absolutely. For, for two from two. On, uh, what, what's considered... I had a look at the draw again today. and Because you know you only look at about three weeks at a time. But this draw that we have, you know, one home game, we managed to get the win. We've got three away games. Already locked down a win again. Uh, back for one home game against Brisbane and then three away again. This, that's got to be one of the toughest first ten rounds, you know. It's a lot of time on the road. You've got a question. I don't know how they... How they come up with this stuff, but to give the team that came last has come last three years in a row that tough a draw to kick off their the, the new season. I, I just I can't fathom yeah. uh, what the thinking was behind that. And there's a similar thing with the Tigers as well. You know they were a bit of a basket case last year, and they've got Melbourne twice. They've got the Roosters in the first six rounds, uh, Brisbane as well. It's yeah, you you got to wonder what's going on there at the draw planning and who's got a hand in where. And I know I know it's tough to pull a draw together. There's there's the TV dictates most of of what it looks like, but um, you know there's, there has to be equity has to come into play. And you'd like to think um, supporters like Newcastle deserve to have a to be halfway through the year and be right in the thick of it. And I would I wouldn't have thought that. Six away games out of the first eight is the best way to bring that about. That's rubbish, and it sort of it doesn't even itself out until uh, sort of uh, June in the back, the first half of July. Sorry, it's like because then we have two home games, uh, a bye, and then three home games. So we have got this like right around Origin period, which is going to be hopefully great for us. But again, just to have that, you know, it must throw you off. Like just to have all these away games at once, just a little bit, you know, just mix that up, just a, so it's a slightly even. Obviously, logistical nightmare to put this draw together uh, with you know even while the A League's still going on and shared stadiums and things like that. But you just got to think, you know, if you really want to have an even comp you really got to have a more well-balanced draw. But one thing that uh, really buoyed my spirits about that, the, the long away run, and, you know, I think the boys won't have to worry about getting a lot of fans to away games because I think it was about the 74th, 75th minute against Canberra, in Canberra, all you could hear was a Newcastle chant ringing around the stadium. It was unbelievable. I did hear that. that yeah. was, I've never 
seen that before. An opposing team has got a chant going at an away game. It was just remarkable. There might have been a few Green Machine uh, sort of fans with the, with the nice jersey underneath, you know, and they've, they've done the Viking clap because everyone wants the Viking clap and then they've gone, oh, bugger this off. And then, there could uh, be a few Newcastle public servants down there. In, in the, in, ah, which uh, keep in an the eye nation's on that capital. Uh, for the away games, guys. We've got a big announcement coming up tonight regarding that very thing. Yeah. But if you want to talk about moments that make a game, moments that make a season, I, I, was, I wanted to give my hats off to Lockie Fitzgibbon, but I'm re-watching the game. I had to give it to Pierce, but... Lachlan Fitzgibbon's tackle on Shannon Boyd yeah. about a metre out from the try line early in the game when yeah. Boyd had really been dominating. He'd been getting a lot of metres, putting our guys on the back feet. Fitzgibbon comes up out of the line, ball and all tackle, gets him to ground. For me, that is just such a huge moment. I think at the back end of the year, we're going to look back on that and say, hang on, this is that was such a, I feel a like, a game, great man. representation of what's going through the boys' heads and how they're really you know, priming for this season. It was unbelievable. Yeah, he's uh, and it was like a ball and all, and sort of a bit of a Cumberland throw, which I've been calling all last season a Cumberland sack. I'm <laughs> uh, thinking, uh, which I thought was what it was called, but uh, no, Cumberland throw. Yes, but, that's right. Yeah, yeah it's uh, Cumberland sack, something else that maybe that you might receive uh, late nights in Newcastle. But it's because yeah. uh, <laughs> you defended on the edge, Crow, and having a big man running at an edge defender like that on the line must be one of the toughest things you could ever imagine. Yeah, and, and what you, what you say is right. It must be those those young bucks who have been through this th- this three. Um, wooden spoons in a row must be that exciting and uh and empowering to be in a game where you are actually a chance of winning twice in a row yeah <laughs> you know literally and yeah. you and you look left and right and you got premiership winners beside you so while i was actually um really concerned about i thought too many new players in one in one fell swoop was actually going to be a real problem um looking at, looking back at it you've got those those young kids who have had the, have done it tough for a while like like Lockie fitz um, who are you know, just drawing a heap of confidence, no doubt, from um, from those players. Seven from seven, uh, he's tries to games. His last seven games, he's scored seven tries. Uh, he's He's been called by a few other games commentators as the most underrated back rail getting around. Uh, and he's, he seems to be, and that's not even counting the try in the, in the trial that he had. Uh, he just seems to, you know, he's got a sniff. He's got a sniff for that try line now and you, you get, get him one-on-one uh, and he's hard to stop. He's got a good hit and spin. Oh, um, it's, it's a hit and spin like I've never seen before. It's unbelievable. And he's big. He's a big boy. Yeah. He's, he's, I think last year his defence needed work, but he seems to have really worked on that. Yeah, and it's, again, I think having Pierce right there on the edge to direct him in defence, I think he's going to just blossom into yeah one of the best back rowers in the comp. I agree. We're just going to take a quick short break and uh, we'll be right back with our stats man, uh, Josh Spiegelman. So uh, hang tight, guys, and we'll be right back. Excited. <clears throat> Beautiful. Good, good. Welcome back to the second half of the Joust. We have our resident stat man, Josh Spiegelman. Josh, are you there? Yeah, mate. Loud and clear. How are you going? Good, mate. Good. Were you here with me, Liam, and, uh, and Crowey as well? Uh, so, what do you think of the uh, what do you think of the game? Any uh, any any stat standouts for you uh, against the Canberra? Definitely, mate. I was there as well. It was well worth a drive. Drive back. It was a great atmosphere. Great to get the win. Hard place to get the win. But from a uh, stats point of view, we got to talk about the man. On everyone's lips and the smell in everyone's noses, the uh, the pong, the pong, uh, 138 meters highest in the team with the ball, five line engagements, uh, second behind Pierce. Uh, a couple of those I wanted to talk about, mate, as you're well aware. Obviously, his lovely goose step to fool Soliola and Williams before sending Fitzgibbon over. Uh, one of his two try assists on the day. The other try assist and line engagement when he sent Moga over. It held the ball up really well. A credit to Moga for running a good line on that try. And um, we got to talk about that pickup from Austin's kick as well, mate. Doesn't show on the stat sheet, but could play for Australia in the slips with those hands. Incredible. <laughs> it shows his confidence and talent big time. Yeah, it set my uh, terribly caked in cholesterol beaten heart in all a flutter. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, and also, hey, one more shout out to um, Slade Griffin, another workman like effort, blue collar hooker, had 42 tackles, only missing two. Um, some of them were vital. Uh, he dragged Papali to the down of the line uh, in the first half, and then another one at the back end of the game on Wyden on a kick return. He's just there at the right time. He changes momentum, and he's been a great buy for us, mate. So those two players combined with the high completion rate, 84%, great team effort. Um, yeah, that's about it, mate. Fantastic. Was there anyone that uh, might have been a bit lack- lackluster uh, stats-wise? Yeah, I wanted to focus on the team this week, the forward pack as a whole. I pointed out last week how we failed to contain Marty Tapao, and similar this week with the two behemoths, Boyd and Paulo. I mean, Barnett tried to lay the law down early, but unfortunately Boyd's just ridiculously big, knocked him out for the rest of the game. 
Um, Boyd had 12 runs, 120 metres, 61 post-contact metres for Boyd, so we didn't shut him down. That was the highest for both teams' forward packs. And just a side note, he's off contract at the end of this year, and we should throw the kitchen sink, I reckon, mate. He could be a great compliment to our already talented pack. Uh, Paulo off the bench, 97 metres, three offloads, that great one for the try. We really got to wrap the ball up. You saw at the end of the game, we lost the offload, offload count 12 to 2, um, and the penalty count as well. And the final note in the in the ruck, mate, seven of our penalties were in the ruck and only two were there, so we got to tidy that up a bit in the ruck. Now you did uh, put up some stats at half time, which didn't make for some uh, didn't make for a very pretty picture for the Knights. We were a bit worried. What was uh, what was going on in the yeah, first so half, mate? It was actually uh, sixty minutes into the match uh, with twenty to go, and I I was like, well, I've never seen us win getting dominated statistically. It was just the offloads, a hundred meters less running, but the missed tackles were by twenty plus, I think, more than the Raiders. And the stats went out the window, mate. I was so happy I was wrong. Um, I, I can't bet anymore with the job I have, but. You know, I'm just happy about that. Of course you can't. <laughs> it's, um, it's a bit unfortunate, but uh, like, I've never been happier to, speak to, to see that you were incorrect uh, because, uh, because I'm wrong all the time, uh, but, uh, that we, but we still lose. But uh, when you're wrong and we win, it's just a great result. It's a fair point you make about... Um, ever, mate. It's awesome. Hey, Crow, has got a question no, for I was you. Just saying that those, when those, you mentioned the big men both last week and this week, um, Really made some some big yards. We don't have a, a massive pack. It's one of the things that are probably worth worth mentioning. But when the both Safidi boys were out there, I thought we looked a bit a bit bigger, a bit stronger, a bit more powerful. And I thought we you know we, that we sort of shifted that the dynamic in the middle of the field there when they when both those boys are exactly, on. So exactly, Crowy mate. I think it, I mean, as much as I like Jamie Bure, he's a brilliant player. But I think it was a bit of a blessing in disguise that Jake had managed to get onto the field, or get onto the squad, then onto the field because he really added that extra size and. Him and Daniel have always played well together, so I'd like to see that a bit more going forward. Um, yeah, I mean, our pack's aimed up this season. SES, he continues to lead the way. He's only 23. Small guy, probably a lock more than a front rower, but he, he holds his own every week. I think he got 50 post-contact metres this week, so keeps working hard. It's great to see. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Speaks. We really appreciate your input, and we'll catch you next week. You right, mate? You don't want to talk about the Roosters game? Oh, yeah, no, jump it. Let's, let's do it. We've got the Roosters game approach, fast approaching, mate. Uh, mate, uh, who, do you, who, do you, uh, who are you looking at for the Roosters? Mate, I, I, I've looked at our players. I wanted to see who, who's historically done well against them. And one of our new recruits, and uh, coincidentally played for the Roosters, uh, Tau Tau Moga. Obviously, that was his first club before he went to the Broncos. He played them twice last year at the Broncos. Uh, he scored a try, a line break in each match, two line break assists. Average 213 metres with the ball over those two matches. So uh, if our halves continue to get him a good early ball like this week, I think um, that's, that's really good. And we have to shut down Blake Ferguson. He's first in the league with run metres. And uh, Joseph Manu is fourth in the league with offloads. So a few danger men, but I'll go more into that during the week in my blog. So no worries. Thank you very much, Speaks. Very appreciative. Thanks, mate. No worries, guys. Speak to you later. See ya. Yeah, um, and like yeah, obviously really important stats there, especially about the Roosters having to shut down. And um, before we jump straight into that, I think we'll uh, we'll have a look at the game review uh, from the, the Raiders game. We'll just get it up on, on our uh, spanky new telly here. So these are the tries, uh, all the big moments from the game. Uh, Great Roosters combination there. One, two, three. If you stop it there, the um that you know obviously that that we, we're going to like any team in the world will, will concede try to that kind of backline movement you know especially having with what what's his name again Liam John Rapana Rapana as uh you know out on the fringe there he's he's, he's built like a, you know like brick shit house and he's he's uh and he's just so athletic so quick and obviously Rossi gave him a little bit too much space there but what what else can you do um what is that your thoughts Greg Yeah I think over time um so last year almost every time a team went wide on us um. They scored. Now, if we're under pressure for any sustained amount of time, we, we leaked some points. This year, I just, straight away, I'm just feeling a sense of confidence. And even though we're still a bit rusty in terms of the cohesion I spoke about earlier, um, I, I just get a sense we've got there's there's more confidence about decision making. There's more experience out in the edges, and uh, give us give us six weeks to get our shit together. Yeah, and I reckon we'll be much tougher nut to crack. Yeah, if we decide to roll that through.
It's not what you want to see, but, uh, you know, I did have a do an next night. Um, you know, he's obviously in a bad way, little there. You've, you've had a few knee problems, Crow. Do you reckon that's, uh, do you reckon that's AC? I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it, the Pong Goose Step. Isn't it quite something? It's a fair try, too. And at Whitehead was good moving back out into the centres. I was a bit worried that, uh, you know, he might do a number on us because he moved out to the centres and played quite well. He had a big impact. But how do you defend against that? No, that was worthy of a try. I mean, there's some great tries scored. It was a very entertaining game. We just saw that there early. I think that was just you know a little bit of complacency. Those those offloads, obviously, they were offloading you know far more than uh, than we were, and, and they were finding hands. Um, we scrambled well, uh, but that was you know after some after some pressure, and we did everything right there except lock that ball up. Um, they scored a couple of tries with some late, real high quality late offloads. You know, almost everyone's on their way back there. Ten, they think the, the tackle's made. It's shut down. They popped that, that late ball. It's just hard to defend against. Yeah, especially that, it's that late in the tackle. Like you know, another game the ref could call help right there, and then that's a, that's a play the ball. So it's just it's it's just second. And and Paula, you know, hit that well that he had that arm free. So it's just a bit of class. Um, yeah, that's that's class. There you go. That one was the rehearsal, boys. The rehearsal, just yeah. practicing. Dress rehearsal. Just practicing. It's okay. Well, it wasn't okay, but. Yeah. <laughs> but what I did like about that try, it's something we discussed last week. Moga and Sione getting. Here's his late offload again. Yeah. Now the tackle's almost made. Suddenly you're on the back foot. When they'll look at their highlights week, their video this week, the Raiders would be pretty happy with the tries they scored. Yeah, they, they did well. And here's, here was the... Uh, this is where the cameras were on. Uh, straight over. It, as we said earlier, he did well to, to you know maintain composure and not, and not muck that up the second time. But a lot of pressure on him. A lot of pressure for a young bloke. Now, I've got to say, boys, three of those tries I missed because I was out at mum and dad's for, for dinner Sunday night. Yeah. And uh, I, when I got out there, I realised I didn't have Fox. Yeah. I haven't, oh, been, out there. I haven't no. been out there since Christmas Day. It's last time. They live at Toronto. Yeah. Sometimes they live a million miles away. Yeah. And now I know why I don't go out there. <laughs> no Fox. So I better watch it on my phone. Yeah. And I had covered sausages. So mum said, put the bloody phone away while we're having dinner. <laughs> so I've missed the first 20 minutes of the game. Had to watch the next on my little bloody iPhone. So that's anyway. uh, you know that happens. At least you know you still listen to your mum. That's good. That's good stuff. You know, if mum says listen to mum. If mum says phone away at the table, phones away at the table. Even for even for she's mother. probably listening to the jazz. I reckon. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Our, our mothers both do, of course. Yeah, they really do. It's a, it's it's, it's frightening. Well, uh, next time you're out there, mate, just got the Foxtel hooked up at Bolton Point. So uh, yeah, there's one satellite dish in the whole suburb. And yeah. I tell you, we've got it. A great place if you're struggling to watch catch the game on Foxtel because you have a lot of Foxtel games. Is the Commonwealth Hotel there at Cooks Hill? I know, Crow, no, you're regular there. Mate, that's, that is my local. That is the best place to go for a beer and a conversation. High quality staff and uh, they're Fox. They've got about 28 screens. I don't care what sport you're watching, you go in the commie and they'll look after you. Stu and Cap Stu, yeah, yeah, fantastic public. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, best, best pub in Newcastle. And we're currently uh, anchoring the bottom of the tipping. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're not doing any well there. So if you want to yeah, jump on that, it's not too late to jump on the tipping comp and, and flog us. Uh, Ellie, you want to run the trip? Now, Matadi came up with a couple of big plays in both attack and defence in the last in that last ten minutes. When it really mattered, he we played like a he played like a skipper. That try, uh, a couple of big uh, defensive shots that really shut down their play when they were trying to do something special to to conjure up a win. He was he was outstanding in, the, in closing the game out. I thought he was obviously playing in a new position. Uh, got issues with concussion. Like in it would obviously play have an effect on just your. Uh, how much commitment you're going in tackles and runs like that though show that he you know he hasn't lost anything as far as uh, confidence. Like he that. knows only one way. He he runs a tough, brave line every mm. time he gets the ball in his hand. He doesn't know any other way. Just the way he's, the way he plays footy. It's yeah, it's the angling back in. He he's, you know you see a lot of players that sort of back the speed and go in and away and, and sort of uh, back the step and maybe get a player one on one and get it to the winger. But yeah, him straight straight as an arrow and and beating two uh, two you know obviously Whitehead a back row as well. 
Um, that was Whitehead's side, wasn't it? It oh, was, yeah. 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 He, he's fairly staunch defender, Whitehead. He's usually quite good there. But, uh, you know, Sione just straight through. Got him yeah. in the back. Straight you know, through. Back, back, he got back way back to 88 when Alan McMahon was coach. He called that, that line that, that Matadio runs, that, that unders line, back in at the ruck. That, that's the tough line for tough blokes, he would say. Um, and, he, and he takes that tough option every time. And, you know what, it, he, gets, he gets bashed a bit. But he comes up with plays like that when it matters too. Yeah, absolutely. I think some of the other tries there on the fringes with uh, Guerra and Fitzgibbon and even Moga straightening up. You know, that was a that that's you know some of those you know make or break lines. You're either going to get over the line or you're actually going to get belted. Like, and it's it's uh, you know it's a quarter of a second in it. Like, um, and yep. and it takes a lot of composure to do, especially after you know um, you know not coming up with the with the chockies too often. So and still sticking to your guns and doing it. You know, it was some really good good signs there. And Crow, uh, I think it'd be safe to say from uh, you know your team perspective watching a bloke take a hard run like that hit that hard line knowing that he could you know get his head caved in it must kind of buoy the team around him to say look we've got blokes who are, they're putting in they're going to bust their ass for yeah. us it must lift if i if you go again go back to, to alan mcmahon years which is only 30 years ago but he had a, a mantra which he lived by and the, and the team lived by be the player others want to play with um and that's that's Matadi. That's that play you're talking about. That's what you want to see as a teammate, and you know he's got your back. You know he'll do. He'll, he'll make the, the tough play, not the not the easy play every time, uh, and that does it. It gives you confidence. You know that's how you build a team. Now another player with that who um, the Fox Sports commentators mentioned it, almost that same sentence was Slade Griffin, and it seems like we're starting to get a team who the other players will play for. They're, yeah. they're playing for each other. They're playing for the fans. It's you know they're really. Giving in for for giving everything for the team, it's unbelievable. What's well, contagious to me, you know, that when those, you see players put their hand up and make those big plays, uh, you know, it's, it's, it gives you that energy when you're playing with them, and it's it's and it, 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 we're, we're seeing more and more players put their hand up. Like last year was, you know, a bit more than the year before, and the year before we're probably putting a lot of pressure on players like gags and stuff like that to you know where's that big play, uh, and when the pressure's on, it's really hard to come up uh, every time. So um, you know, ne- then last year we saw you know Brock Lamb stepping up in a few games. Uh, this year with Pierce's control, it's really allowed all these other players to really focus on their role in the side and uh, just do their role really well. Uh, and it's it's coming up again and again. Would you agree with that, Craig? Yeah, I, we're talking about Slade, I, I do feel a bit sorry for, for Danny Levi. I'm a big fan of, of his. He's a great player and he's finding himself in second grade. But you cannot deny the fact that, that Slade's just playing outstanding, playing tough, 40 tackles a game, making big yards, you know, controlling play mistake free just what you want from your dummy half and again just what he did last last week 78 minute pierce kicks long uh white and collects the ball just outside his goal line first man there slade griffin he, he's just he seems remarkably fit he does everything at 100 percent, and he does that those little one percent as the the nitty-gritty oh yeah it's just wonderful to see now, Liam, I think it's uh, time for our favourite segment. It's time to open your sack. Mm. Do we have any... Uh, <laughs> you're very excited about yes. this. Now, this is where we get some questions in, Crowley, from uh, from all the jousters out there. Um, now, uh, what, what have we got in the sack this week, Liam? we got a few, actually. A couple of really good ones. Now, Michael Martin. Uh, there's been talk that uh, Brown is open or is actively looking to sign another forward. We've got room under the cap. He thinks maybe another middle forward will really bolster the pack. Um, but do we need it with the... The players we've signed, the emergence of some really good young middle forwards. Do we need it? Do we need another middle? Craig? Well, I don't know whether we need it this year, but I, I think Heinington and Lily Man are obviously the wrong side of 32 or 33. Yeah, yeah, getting there. Um, so they're not long-term options. So I'm thinking Brownie's thinking longer term, and he's, he's talking a middle player of a younger age who will be for five or six. That's what I'm guessing. So he's thinking. He's not thinking about 2018. He's thinking beyond that. And, that, and I like what uh, sorry Spiegelman was thinking. Shannon Boyd off contract at the end of the year. And Michael uh, has also mentioned that Tavita Pangai Jr., a South Newcastle Junior, former Knights NYC player, also off contract at the end of the year, yeah. did go up to play for Wayne Bennett. But would they be good targets? Yeah. Any anyone of that. Obviously, we've made this uh, uh, focus on um, you know uh, explosiveness, uh, quick leg speed, that more athletic prop. Uh, you know, as you said, like Lilliman Hyington uh, are there to do a job, and that job necessarily is probably more composure, getting through the numbers. Uh, you know, and a lot around the side for you know helping these younger. Folks. I think if you'll find that they went after Matt Scott, missed out, and so this, they still wanted some experience and some stability. Size, yeah. So those boys were the were the their, their plan B. Yeah. But still in the back of his mind, Brandy wants that that marquee prop who's twenty five, yep. not thirty five. Yeah, no, and I think that it's been reflected in. Uh, 
him and uh, Moons is, uh, you know, in the contract, you know, even though we bring them from other clubs, uh, obviously Chris Harrington, Chris Hingdingting, uh, uh, is uh, is on the other side of 30, as we said, oldest player in the NRL, I think, currently. Uh, one-year contract, as well as... Uh, getting Lilliman for one year as well. So it does give us that option if they do perform this year. Probably not so much Hyington. I can't really see him running around again because he's doing such a... You know, he doesn't look 35 when he's out there, but... I uh, saw know. him on the drink the other night. He looked about 18. <laughs> well, he's got the shorts of a, a live 18-year-old woman at King Street. Yeah, They're he has them up high. He has them up high. Very tight. Yeah, and I believe he's taken on a fathership role to uh, Brock Lamb and Connor Watson, which is sweet, you know? Young blokes, they're uh, calling him dad. Yeah, well, really yeah. sweet. He's probably old enough to be, you know, somewhere <laughs> in the mix of the fathers. There. Now, um, next question. Arn Betridge, when are the refs going to harden the fuck up and knuckle down on the play the ball area? The Raiders were woeful in around the play the ball, clearing the ruck. They really slowed uh, Newcastle's line speed. Mm. Uh, not line speed, sorry. Slowed Newcastle's ruck speed, but yep. I thought we adjusted really well. But yeah, what's going on there in and around the ruck? They were obviously cleaning up the penalties, cleaning up the, pl- uh, sorry, offsides, cleaning up the play the ball. But what's going on in the ruck there? That was a mess. I think it's almost like they've got a formula before the game starts. Let's blow a couple of early penalties. That'll let them know that we're not going to tolerate this. But if they if they persist, it's like the refs give up. Yeah. So yeah. They, they blew their two or three. We actually and it probably maybe had a, a slight effect, but then they, just, they crept back in and they just let, they let it go. I, it's like that they've only got one. They got one trick pony. The refs blow yeah. a couple of early penalties and that doesn't work. We well we we'll just shit ourselves and. I agree. I think you got to like. This is what we've talked about even last year. Bring back the five minutes. You know what I mean. You want to tidy up that ruck speed. You really want to get people in line. Uh, you know, one warning, two warning, go. Uh, and the third, you know, third for the for, for laying around. In the oh, ruck. the old five minutes sin bin. Five minutes sin bin. Yeah, bring back the fiver. Just to throw it out there. Like, so if he's always got the five in his pocket, uh, suddenly you know that that because you're seeing them even like penalties. Uh, people are using penalties as breathers on the line. You know what I mean. Like, if it's your second or third um, uh, tackle defending on, and you're in inside, inside your ten, just get lay on. Draw a penalty, everyone has a breather reset. Let's bring it the five metres too while we're at it. Bring it back five. Bring back five? Yeah. What do you reckon? But I think the refs have shown their, what is it, average of 20 penalties across the games over the weekend. It's too much. It's too much. But they're bringing back the sin bin. I think it's four sin bins already in yeah. the first two rounds. Mitch Moses is making up two of them. Yeah. So, yeah, it seems like they're cracking down, but it's just so hard to get a feel on what they're cracking down on. I think you'll find of those 20, mm. 10 of them are in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, as they try and you know, establish their authority, but... As I said, up if they, I see their habits creeping back in in the back end of the game. They're not quite as maybe they're buggered, which they would be. Yeah, uh, the refs get they do tired a lot of too. Running, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, like that's what the thing. Like teams like Canberra, you know, like, and, and the Knights, get, they get tightened up around the around the ruck. But like a team like the Storm, uh, teams that do it really well, uh, they end up, I think, in that second half of the game, really start dictating the ruck speed to the refs. You know, what, what's the standard, and it's. Uh, you can see the kind of control they have. Uh, is there anything else in the sack? Lane? Yeah, round out the sack. Our dear friends over at Shouts from the Sideline podcast, they've asked us, who is the sexiest current Knights player? <laughs> Sorry, Crowey, current player. So you ruled out. Yeah. You were a shoe in but uh, <laughs> current player. Oh, you got to skip. Like, you know, there's, there's more, to, more, to, more to appeal, I think, than just looks. Uh, you know, thank God, Nagy, because yeah. he'd be up to <laughs> shit otherwise. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's, there's, there's got, got some great, there's some uh, some great looking blokes getting around in, in the red and blue, and there's such a it's a vibrant colour to have on. Uh, you know, it really brings out all the best features. Uh, so I I got to throw it out there. Uh, oh, I think the Ranger, the Ranger, or yeah. the Kalen Ponga. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, wears especially, it well. especially now. He's, he's, I know he's a redhead. I didn't yeah. even realise that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now he's just gone up in my, my estimations. <laughs> so we got we got the pom- my mum's a redhead. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, Liam. You got it. Uh, you got a bit of red in the beard. There, I got a bit of red in the beard. Oh yeah, I wear the the rust belt. Um, look, I like uh, you know Connor Watson. He's got a bit of that kind of surfy, yeah. lazy eyes. Jailbird look. look. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. He looks like he's kind of from the wrong side of the tracks, which. I, th- I believe he's from the Central Coast, which is kind of all the wrong side of the track. Yeah. <laughs> that whole area is on the wrong side of all the track. Of it, yeah. And, uh, you know, just it's reconfirming that looks aren't everything and the, the appeals, I'm going to say, Lockie fits because really looks aren't everything. But, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, he's got he, a very long head. He's a big guy. A he's a big guy. Tall head. Yeah. yeah, but no, yeah. That's, that's, uh, thank you very much for your sack, Liam. Uh, it frightens me every week. Uh, but uh, very quickly, we better uh, dump the news. Yes, the news this week. Uh, there were like a, again, we're waiting for a controversy because we, we love a controversy here at the Joust, uh, not for the Knights, but for every other team. <laughs> but there was the closest thing that we had to a controversy this week was uh, was Parramatta absolutely getting flogged, fifty four blot. Uh, thoughts is it, what what's the matter, Parramatta? Crow, do you have any ideas? I I rate Parramatta or rated Parramatta. Yeah, I'll rephrase that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, after their their form in the 
well, their form last year. Yeah. Um, some players back this year. They were good in the trials. They were a bit unlucky against the Panthers. But um, after about three minutes, I reckon they were gone yeah. against Manly. It was a hot day. They looked lethargic, set one in defence. And they, then they didn't touch the ball for about 20 minutes. And they, were, they just they put the white flag up. It was a, it was a train wreck. It uh, was, but now, d- maybe maybe um, they had a, a really hot game the week before, and they didn't recover well, and they come out in thirty degrees again, and thought this is too tough. But it isn't, if that's the case, I'm still it's alarm bells for me. There's um there's a bit of a uh, they they said apparently Manly had their their warm up inside, uh, and just did a bit of ball work, and because it was like thirty eight degrees, Parramatta did a full half hour session outside before the game. Do you think this is like something that you, you think that uh, would, as a player, Crow, do you think that would that would benefit, you know, get you out in the elements more or do you think keep them cold as much as long as I, you can? I reckon, think of this, that, so 35 degrees week before yeah. and you warm me up half an hour and you think, oh my God, this is going to be as tough as last week. Well, mentally, it's not putting me in the ideal performance state you want to be in when, you're, when that kickoff comes. And you've got to defend first set and they go 80 metres and it, straight away, I reckon they were just they were off. From, from that moment on. Just zapped. Sun yep. zapped. To yep. be fair to Manly's credit, though, they put on a clinic. DCE was unbelievable. Tom or Jake Trebovich? Which one's the chubby Jake. one? Jake. 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 Yeah, he's playing more of a 5'8 role. He looks like a butcher. From lock. He does look like a butcher, doesn't yeah. he? Playing more of a 5'8 role from lock, which I'm kind of excited to have him doing that in Origin, throwing some passes around like that, tossing the footy around. He making must, his nose through. He's one, amazing. one of those guys that doesn't look much, but he must be strong as an ox. You know those, those players that has the right size for a tackling technique, just throw right shoulders into hips and just can hit anyone really hard? There's the players that you just you can't really work out. You know what I mean? You, you like, wonder how, though, he's genetically linked to his brother. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, both, <laughs> well, they're both great footballers, but both diametrically opposite in terms of their physique and their style. It's amazing. Might be a bit of an adoption going on there. Maybe, and not know. good looking players. They would not have made the short list of sexiest anything no, ever. No, no, no. no. It might, maybe he was just rocked up on, maybe, maybe on the doorstep. Maybe his dad was a final. <laughs> I'll tell you what it did do though. It was, it was a good form line for the Knights, wasn't it? Like we'd beaten Manly the week before. They yeah. come out and pumped them by 50. So it gave us a bit of confidence into that uh, Raiders game. The rugby league mathematics is all over the shop considering the Parramatta put a clinic on against us. But we're, we're really in this anomaly and anything can happen. Uh, but it's very exciting. It's an exciting time. And it, very exciting because this week uh, we're moving up to uh, play the Roosters. Very hard road, road trip. Three games. Uh, last three we played against them. Only managed 10 points. Um, so, But Liam, you, you're going to... Uh That's pretty dire. No, no, 10 no. no, no. You, well, what are we doing with the game, Liam? You, <laughs> what are we doing with the game? I think... The Roosters are a tough one to work out. Obviously, they've splashed out on some huge signings. You've got your Cronk, you've got your Tedesco, but it seems like they've really let themselves lapse in other key areas. There's a bit of depth, questions around their depth. Um, Tupo's out injured, yeah. I think, for nine to ten weeks. He's so, going to pack corn season. Yeah, so I think they're going to have at least one fringe of Orbison and a makeshift winger. So I think starting to get early ball to Sione and Tau this week was a great lead-in because I think Tau Tau especially could run some you know, run some blokes off their feet out there. Um, and in the middle, they just don't seem to be as imposing as they used to be. The Waria hargraves Napa combination two years ago was one of the fiercest front rows in the comp, but they just seem to have softened a bit. And outside of those guys, Isaac liu has been playing really well, COCU Takahifo. Um, but I just feel like their forward pack isn't as scary as it was, was two or three seasons ago. So I think we'll stick to what we're working at, run them around a bit, and then... Spread it. We've got to play a very wide ball game, a few passes off the ruck. I think there could be uh, another upset on the cards this week. Crow, your tip for, the, for this week? I didn't think we'd win the first two games, yep. to be honest. Um, I'm confident this week. I yep. think we've got so many extra roosters. If we haven't got all the inside information on yeah, all yeah. those <laughs> players, uh, we'll, we'll never. You know, I'd love to be in the video session this week of the Knights. There'll be some dissecting and some, and some analysis going on. And the other thing is, um, not just the roosters, but all those teams that finished top of the table last year and had World Cup players, a lot of World Cup players. I think these early rounds are probably doing it a bit tough. Um, the players played right up until December and um, you know, probably aren't at their peak yet. So I reckon we're getting the Roosters at a good time. A, Kronk hasn't really gelled yet. They've got a lot of rep players and we've got a bunch of Roosters that are just ready to shit bag and, and play, <laughs> play, play, play their hearts out. Fantastic. Yes. Now, Liam, I understand that you will be attending the game. Nagy, I understand that you'll be attending the I game. I think we're both going to be attending the game. Yes, you know, we're, we're hopping down on the train there. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. What is this? Train? You get train to the station? No, you got to go Yeah, you train to Central something, you some bus to... No, you can walk from there, boys. You can walk it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Other people could walk. Yeah, we, we try not to. We'll probably Uber it there. <laughs> we'll be there. If you see us there, come give us a, a wave hello. Yeah, keep an eye out on the socials. We'll hopefully throw together a bit of a just... 
what do they call those things when you're a kid? Excursion. Excursion. So, yeah. yeah, lovely to meet some fellow jousters down at the game. I think our resident stats guru will be there as well. Yeah. So, yeah, keep an eye on the socials and we'll let you know what's going on. And, uh, and Crow, uh, later in the, on in the season, uh, we can preview something that might be happening maybe with the old boys, uh, possibly. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Exciting times. So, the old boys um, have one or two big fundraisers per year. We, we support a number of charities. This year, it's the Mark Hughes Foundation, which is probably the most obvious charity for us to support. We are looking at a... Um, a state of origin function uh, on that, that game two, which is a Sunday game. So a Sunday session, a real big event. We're going to bring along some high-profile ex-origin players. It will be a cracker. I think you boys are, are into host. Oh. So I would... Oh. Wait, I, let's just... I won't, I won't give too much information other than to say, uh, watch this space. It'll be it'll be one not to miss. It's going to be a really great night. I can't wait. I'm very excited. And uh, if you like uh, if you like the jazz, please... Uh, like us on Facebook and find us on SoundCloud as well as iTunes, uh, Instagram, Twitter, all the pipes, all the social pipes we're on. Uh, but uh, I can't thank uh, Liam. Thank you enough for my co-host and as well as Stephen Crow. Thank you very much for joining us on another episode of The Jousters. We'll catch you next week, Jousters. Pleasure, boys. Thank you.